Hello noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. Today we are on a mission to see if the internet is teaching you correct Italian. So I found these websites, I just picked three at random, that are supposed to be teaching you or correcting uh, your Italian pronunciation of the most mispronounced words. Now I've got a video of my own, I'll leave a link in the description, but I want to see if first of all uh, it's the same list of words or maybe if there are a few words that people mispronounce uh, as they try to speak Italian, that, are, that differ from the actual video that I made, but also I want to see if they're teaching it correctly. Are they presenting real information? Let's check it out, let's jump into the first one. For example, the word bello can mean beautiful or handsome, depending on whether it is pronounced with a hard or soft L sound. What? In what language? Absolutely not true. I, mean, I must be misunderstanding here, wait a second. The importance of proper pronunciation in Italian culture. Proper pronunciation is important in any language, okay. Italian is a language that is full of passion and emotion. Yeah, they're, they're literally teaching you wrong. So no, there is no soft or hard L in Italian. There is just single L and double L. But in this case, whether you say bello with one L, which doesn't exist, or you say bello, I mean, bello just means handsome. If you want to say beautiful, it's bella. Uh, you have to, to just change the gender in the, in the word. Completely wrong. In addition, Italian culture places a strong emphasis on hospitality and welcoming others, sure. And then it's giving a few possible sources, resources to learn Italian pronunciation, which I think didn't work with you, so I, I'm not sure how good that would be. Minimal pairs. Minimal pairs are words that differ by only one sound. Practicing these can help you improve your ability to distinguish between sounds. Here are some examples, let's see. Palla, ball, versus pala, shovel, correct. Cane, dog, versus canne, canes, correct. Fama, fame, versus fama, hunger. Incorrect. Absolutely not. I mean, you wrote the same thing. I don't know if it's a typo, but hunger is fame with an E at the end. Fama, fame. Maybe you might want to double check this one, mate, because that's, that's wrong. Oh, they've got tongue twisters. Let's try them. Sopra la panca la capra campa, sotto la panca la capra crepa. Tre tigri contro tre tigri. Gli acciughe sono già state di salate. What the hell? So the first two are real. I mean, I've, I learned them as a, as a child in Italy, but the last one, not only I've never heard it, but it's incorrect. Gli acciughe, meaning the anchovy. We don't say gli, it's le, le acciughe. I think this guy does not know Italian at all. Like, really bad. Like, really bad. Goodness gracious. Glad you got me. I'll watch your back. Vowels. Italian says five vowel sounds, actually seven, if we are talking about the majority of regional varieties and standard. There are some varieties that have only five, but Italian has, five, has seven vowels. Unlike English, the pronunciation of Italian vowels is consistent. Well, yeah, mostly. The A is pronounced like the A in father. Ah, see, the only thing is that I wouldn't make it as long as you would with father. The E is pronounced like the E in met. The I is pronounced like the E in meat. The O is pronounced like the O in go. It's not. And the U is pronounced like the U in two. So I understand that when you're trying to use English spelling to convey pronunciations in another language, aka Italian in this case, you're just trying to approximate. So I'm not just trying to be picky or pedantic. But the it's not even a matter of you're giving the wrong information. Italian has seven vowel sounds. The, it, you write five vowels, but the sounds are seven depending again on, the, unless we're talking about specific varieties that only have five. But the one when you're saying the O in Italian is pronounced like the O in go is wrong because depending on what accent the person has and in general, the O in English, it's a multivowel sound in the majority of accents. It's a O, O, at least in the accent I've learned. But even in an American accent or an Australian accent, yeah, you might chant. I'm just going to try. I'm just going to try. But depending on the accent, some people will say, oh, 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 oh. So, okay, all of these accents are different, but the thing that they have in common is that it's a pretty long vowel. In Italian, a good example would be the word pot with a British accent. So, oh, that's how you pronounce it, not oh. Oh or O oh, does not exist in Italian. Anyways, yeah, so yeah, this, this website was pretty bad. Let's see if we can find something better. BuzzFeed. 
Americans are always pronounce Italian words wrong, so here's the right way to say them. Already a little condescending approach, to be honest, because I mean Italians mispronounce words in English all the time. But whatever, they're trying to teach. Let's see. Hello all, I am back again, blah blah blah. Okay, so the first word is mozzarella. Mozzarella. Yeah, so don't say mozzarella, say mozzarella. Yeah, if you want. So, let's just make this one clear. If you are in England, in America, in freaking Pakistan, and you change the way you pronounce words because you adapt them to your own language, well, that's something that everyone does. So there's nothing wrong with that. But if out of curiosity, you sometimes wonder, you're like, yeah, but how would an Italian say it? Or maybe you want to try and use these words as you communicate with an Italian and you want to make sure that they understand you, then it's good to fi figure out how we Italians actually do pronounce them, right? So let's, uh, let's try that. So this one would be mozzarella rather than like mozzarella or mozzarella. Uh, you always like pronounce every syllable in Italian. Next one. So yeah, this one is prosciutto. Prosciutto. And they say not prosciut. Honestly, I've never heard anyone say prosciut. I've heard people say prosciutto. Uh, I've, I've heard that. But I've never, have you ever? Well, let me know in the comments if you've ever heard anyone mispronounce it prosciut. Uh, I never did. But there is one thing I can add to this. The intensity of the sh sound the sh depends on where you're from in italy in the sense that the further south you go the stronger that one becomes even mine is a little stronger i say prosciutto prosciutto but not everyone pronounces it this way number three well this is super famous of course bruschetta um they're saying don't say bruschetta uh, of course some people say bruschetta uh, they didn't really take that into account but yeah bruschetta this one as well you have two different ways to pronounce it we're gonna do a dive in here today. So, you could say it, let's see if you can tell the difference. I'll do a little test. Number one. Bruschetta. Bruschetta. Number two. Bruschetta. Bruschetta. Could you tell the difference? I'll give you five seconds if you want to let me know in the comments. Okay, so the difference was the way I pronounced the vowel E because, or E in English, because it can be pronounced, if you want to speak standard Italian, then it's a closed E, E. But a lot of Italians, depending on which region you're in, will pronounce it with an open E, and it becomes, so both are acceptable, bruschetta, bruschetta, it kind of depends on where you're from, but if you want to speak standard, it's bruschetta with an E. And I know there's some Italians who don't speak this variety will get mad at me in the comments. That's as always. Versace, not Versace. That's correct. Versace. Now, so far, this website, at least, is teaching it right. Spaghetti, not spaghetti. So, in this case, they are taking into consideration the phenomenon of pronouncing the T as a soft D, which is actually in linguistics called flapping. And it tends to happen most in the American and Australian variety rather than, for example, in England, where normally people tend to pronounce it spaghetti. But either way, uh, an Italian would, because there are two T's, says spaghetti. In this case as well, you can choose to open the vowel or close it. Spaghetti, spaghetti, standard, closes it. Oh, that's, a, that's the pasta sauce. Bolognese, bolognese. Uh, it says rather than bolognese. I think bolognese is basically, you're basically saying it in, 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 a, in French, aren't you? Of course, with an English, it's like an English or an American person trying to say an Italian word with a French accent <laughs> or pronunciation. That's what I think that one comes from, actually. I think like an English person must have heard a French pronounce it because it kind of sounds a bit like they say in French, bolognese, bolognese, I think. If you're French, let me know. But yeah, in Italian, two varieties. Bolognese, Bolognese. You can tell that there is a difference also with the S. One is northern, one is southern. Well, the website, not too bad, a little annoying the way they presented it, but still, pretty good. Next one. Ten Italian words you've been saying wrong and how to pronounce them correctly. Okay. Oh, now in the second part it says probably been saying wrong. Bruschetta, we already have that. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's... So usually it's mispronounced pistachio, or should I say it's pronounced pistachio in English, but yes, in Italian it would be pronounced pistacchio. And this is maybe one pronunciation rule that you could learn here with this video. CH is always a K in Italian, and that's a big difference with, for example, both French and Spanish. Uh, English is kind of all over the place because you have words like church and then words like character. So like CH sometimes is a K, sometimes is a, is a, is a CH sound, but in Italian if you have C plus H, it's always a K. So pistacchio. 
I love pistacchi. Oh yes, that's a good one. So it says here, it's, it's the way Italian says thank you, and we say grazie. Grazie. I think it's important to kind of uh, enunciate it for foreigners so that you can tell that it's three separate sounds. In fact, it's saying here that it, it's often uh, pronounced as grazie, and, and it's not. It's grazie, grazie, grazie. It literally means graces like graces to you, like the Lord's grace be unto you type of thing. That's what it means. It's very religiously connected. Per favore, we already have that. Okay, yeah, I did this one on my uh, dedicated video and it's gnocchi. And imagine people say nocci and this, yeah, nocci is how it's usually pronounced by those who don't speak Italian. And this is one of those situations where it can be a little more quote-unquote dangerous, uh, simply because I won't understand you. I, in fact, I will misunderstand you. Uh, if I don't know exactly what you're talking about, you don't have it in front of you, and you say, for example, oh, I really like Italian noci, then I will think that you're saying that you like walnuts. Because if you pronounce it noci, that's how we say walnut. It's spelled N-O-C-I in Italian, but yeah, I will, and I will completely misunderstand. Whereas this, we pronounce gnocchi. So once again, we have the situation of the CH that you're already a master of, it's just a K, and the GN is a ñ, just like in Spanish, with the N with a little thing on top. Buongiorno, yeah, not buongiorno. It's true, yeah, I noticed that a lot of people tend to skip the U uh, in Italian in this case, but it is pronounced, and we say buon, buon giorno. Buongiorno, rather than buongiorno. Yeah, the island of Capri, um, this is, I've heard people here say it Capri, so it must be once again a French influence. In Italian the stress is on the first syllable, the first vowel, and we say Capri, Capri. Beautiful island, by the way. I've been to Capri several times, it's just, just off of Naples. It takes about, I want to say, 20-25 minutes by boat, and then it's, it's, it's maybe even less depending on the day and or what boat you ride on, and it's good. Number 10 is an interesting one, and here is something we need to be careful of. So it's the first kind of red flag that I'm seeing. They're telling you how to pronounce the word espresso. <clears throat> now, the reason why I say it's a little bit of a red flag is because here they're focusing on the fact that people mispronounce this Italian word and turn it into an X. They say espresso, whereas it's just espresso. And even though that's true, it's correct, I think it would have been very important to let people know that we never use it. Like, literally, you can spend 20 years in Italy and never say this word. Because I think what people think is that you go to an Italian cafe and you want to order a coffee, and so you say, excuse me, un, un espresso per favore. No one says it that way. We just say, un caffè per favore. So when you're in Italy, you don't really order a... An, a, a an espresso coffee because that's the standard, it's the default in Italy. Therefore, there is no point in expressing that because if you just ask for a coffee, you're getting espresso. So my suggestion would be, don't focus too much on how this word is pronounced, but just learn to say it the Italian way. If you're in Italy, un caffè, per favore. Okay, so uh, I hope that this was interesting, fun, entertaining, and that you could learn a thing or two. Are you trying to learn Italian? Let me know in the comments, Let me tell, and tell me how long you've been learning this language and why you chose it. Thank you so much for trying to learn my language, I really appreciate that, and thank you for watching Metatron's Academy.